After 36-18 win against Coventry Bears at the JF Holmby Stadium today, uh, what are the what are your views as head coach, uh, Paul Perry? I thought in parts we were very good. It was always going to be mix and match because that's what we, we set off to do. The young Ryan Johnson having his first debut for start, and, and uh, him and uh, and uh, Bradley Marwood in the halves. I thought they did a good job. I thought our kicking game in the first half was poor. We dropped it on their back three that caused us problems, but we scored some good tries and. Uh, it was a bit of a glue pot of the pitch, so it's never going to be a spectacle. But and when we changed up again and, and, and we got on the front foot, we scored some great tries, but letting some soft tries, really. Did you feel the, uh, you know, you said before the match you're going to use this game as an opportunity to, to uh, blitz in the fringe, fringe players. Do you feel the experiment paid off for you? Yeah, definitely we got the win, you know, is that that's what people want, but also we give these kids game time and it's about development. This is a division that we can develop players in. And, and we're going to do that and uh, you know we want to see them out there fending for themselves and a bit of pressure on themselves to, to perform and they, and they did that in Matty Wilde as well, played on a, on, a, on, a, on the right edge for long periods of, of the game and did really well. So you know and Luke Cresswell again, an outstanding performance at the back so everyone's coming along great. The conditions weren't that great after a terrible day yesterday and it was very very sticky in the warm up and the lad said the ball was like a bar of stock but we were completed at 18.5%, they were at 70% so they did pretty well as well. I thought the, I think Coventry will cause a lot of teams problems when they play them down there. Very big physical side with two good centres and a half back will run the ball so they've got a recipe for, for a good team if you take them lightly. I thought we were a little bit giddy, we left the players to, to their own devices before the game and we just had a little look at what was going on in the changing room when we play these southern sides and we had a little word afterwards that you know the players set the culture at the club and they've got to rock up, rock up as if every game is going to be a real tough one because uh, there is no tough games especially in the middle and uh, we spoke some about you know probably being a little bit loose before the game and and, and our mental attitude before the game and, and you know I think Joe Bullock slept in on the and, and, and the player got on him on his inside and I don't think that would happen if we were playing Whitehaven, uh, Oldham or Keithley you know so the tribe we conceded were pretty soft but shape and structure was pretty good even when we, we changed up and, and we had the young fellas out there you know and we probably got 10 players sat on the sidelines you, you know some senior players that didn't play and some that were sat in the stand for, for, the, for the whole first half so we're pretty pleased the way things are going and how, how players are being developed here. Yeah. So, I say, some good lessons learned from today's game? Yeah, always, and, and you can't turn up and, and not prepare. And I thought our kicking game across the board wasn't that great. At half time, we asked the pivots to kick the ball five from five, which is five metres in from touch and five metres off the goal line, and, and, and let them say, let them have the ball where they don't want it and let them come out. And we didn't do that again. We put high bombs up and they had the ball there and, and caused the problems on kick returns. So, you know, if we're playing Keithley or, or, or Oldham, we put the ball in the corner and, 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 and we'd work really hard. And we didn't do that, but having said that, you know, we find a formula to win and, and, and we won the game. And, you know, and, and all credit to Coventry, you know, they've improved on last year and will cause people problems. That's why we played them, you know, because we know they knew they've recruited well, they've got a good coach in Tom Sang and, and, and they've caused us some problems. And, and they did that. So it was a good test for us, you know, without breaking the bank and getting more players injured. And, and we changed up pretty frequently and kept our middle uh, pretty clean and fresh. So. You know, ready for Keith next week. Yeah. Obviously, bringing in people like Dally Moore and his half back partner made a big difference to the side. Uh, did, did you feel? Or did I you think we scored some good tries. I think we asked him to run the ball as well on some of the last play options, um, which we don't really we do. We leave it to the halves to find a kick. But you know, we thought off their goal line, we'd just say, give them the ball where they don't want it. But I think the last tackle, last play we put on with Brian Johnson and Bradley, we scored a nice try in the corner, and it was on the last tackle play, and then we'd asked them to do that. So you know, the things we're asking them to do, they're doing, and uh, we come up with a great play, a running play on, on the back end of the set, which is what we asked for. So we're, we're, we're asking them challenging things to do, which they probably wouldn't normally do in normal games. We had Danny Moore in the centre today. Uh, Danny Toll had a spell in the centre today and they're back rowers so we had a little bit of adversity across the park. Joe Bullock who played massive minutes yeah. in the previous games, we, we left him on the sideline for long periods and Martin Aspinwall again and, and, and Mossy, it was a good run for him, he played a little bit longer after his ankle injury so next week will be a big test for us against Keith Lee, you know Tom Walker will be back next week, Jerry Stack will be back next week, uh, Brett Carter will be back next week so we'll have some uh, player power coming back next week as well and we'll rotate again.
Any injury problems from today's game? Um, Brad Crowley got a concussion. Um, again, uh, Shane Tall had to come off with a head injury, which we've we got concerns about because he had one last week. Again, Shane Tall, sorry, and so them two really. Uh, Danny Abraham had a slight little um, knee knee problem, um, but we don't think that's much. He, he reckons he could have stayed out, but we brought him off as a precaution because we had bodies. And like I say, we mixed, mixed and matched. So we had edge, middle play and edge. Martin has been more played a lot of the second half in the right second morning. He's a middle block player. So, you know, we, we threw a lot at him and, and see what the reaction would be. And we still got the, like a convincing win. I say we're probably disappointed in, in two soft tries. One was a well worked fast look try, the other two were real soft. So we're probably disappointed in them. And we let a couple of soft tries in against Whitehead in the week before. So we're probably trying to try and iron them out in, in, in the next few weeks before the, the April Cup starts and, and before we play Keithley. But all in all, you know, a, a worthwhile uh, game. Yeah, definitely. I think I think we've got a good relationship with Coventry and Ron. We sent we sent players there last year uh, for look for for a long period. Uh, and they did really well for them and they come back refreshed. So we've got a good relationship with them. They've travelled down, all credit to them. They've come and they wanted a test uh, against us um, and they've recruited and bought well and, and the club's on the up and uh, they're probably the top end of the southern teams, I feel, with the, recruit, with the recruitment they've made. And I think there'll be a test for anybody who takes them lightly. I, I understand you just returned from a trip in Australia. Was it worthwhile for you to enjoy it? Yeah, definitely. I got invited over there by Brendan Barley, who was a former head of youth at the Brisbane Broncos. I stopped with uh, Jamie and Sally Munro, who were fantastic people and who looked after us uh, really well. And, and we spent some time with, there with Brendan Barlow and he went through the structures and, and, and stuff that he'd, been, he'd put in place at the Broncos that helped us. Uh, we took us down to the Broncos to the training ground, met some of the, the staff there, you know, really worthwhile and looked at what they looked at with their youth development and it was really, really good. Brendan's actually spent time at uh, New Zealand Warriors, uh, uh, the All Blacks as well. Um, so he just passed on that map knowledge and showed us what he looked for in the development of kids and that and I showed him what we've been doing at Barrow and he was pretty impressed at what was what we're doing as a club. So I'd like to thank Brendan for inviting us over there and Sally and Jamie Munro were fantastic people who, who locked off to us for 15 days. Where about to Australia we stayed? Uh, we stayed in Tugan, which is on the on the Gold Coast and then um, we went to see Brendan in Brisbane, we stopped with him in Brisbane and then we went to the, the Broncos, Brisbane Broncos from there. So a really worthwhile trip, you know, just shows that we're doing things right when, when uh, you know, I spoke to Brendan and showed him what we're doing in our programmes and he said it was very, very good and, you know, we can only take the club forward. So obviously very positive news from Australia, in far, so far as being in the, the, the next generation Barrow of Elite players through. Yeah, we just showed him what we're doing and where we started two years ago, what we look for in development of kids and he showed us what, what they were doing which was real, real simple and how they analyse somebody from 12 and take them to 16 and, and their progress to do. He's not actually attached to the Broncos now but he's got strong connections there with the likes of Alfie Langer and, and people like that uh, who we spoke to while we were over there. So. You know, really, really positive stuff coming, you know, from the club and, and how, how we're doing. So, like I say, I'd just like to thank Brendan and uh, Sally and Jamie Munro for looking after as well. Oh, no doubt, hoping for another trip again soon. Yeah, definitely. And uh, they've invited us back again, Jamie and Sally. So uh, they're going to come over here. So he's a big uh, Australian uh, Aussie Reels football fan, Jamie. So he was showing us a little bit of stuff like that. His son's a professional um, American foot, uh, Reels footballer, and uh, his other son Jack is is. Uh, actually a professional golfer has just got his tour card on the Australian tour so you know they, they've got a good pedigree themselves but they looked after us outstandingly so did Brendan Barlow and it was a great experience to go out there over the Christmas period and, and, and learn so much about the game. Ah thank you very much indeed Paul Crary. All right thank you. Cheers. Leo. Cheers.